Okay guys, let's get ready to do some things with wings. Easy, fast, fun, and so cute! Good morning everybody! Welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I want to welcome you to Things with Wings. We're going to be using a pen, some pencils, watercolor pencils, regular colored pencils, whatever you have. It's going to be fun, it's going to be fast, and it's going to be easy. I'm going to set this over to the side now though. <laughs> I have so many ideas for you. Good morning! I hope that you guys like this a little bit earlier in the day. I am trying some things out. My husband is going back to his regular day shift now. So I'm having to shift my brain. I am doing super easy beginner. And you're looking at these and going, yeah, <laughs> those aren't easy beginner. Yeah, they are. Super, super easy beginner. And what I'm going to do is show you the basics of how to draw a dragonfly. And then we're going to play with it. We're going to put it on a postcard. And I think we'll probably end up doing three dragonflies on the postcard. Good morning, friends. Thank you so much for being here. If you're new here, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when new videos go up. Actually, I want that where I can see it. Just to keep in my memory what's going on. Oh, and remember when we did that, this flat uh, florals? This morning, I just went in and dropped a couple dragonflies on here after the fact, and it worked out so well. Dragonfly wings are transparent, so you can see through them. So you can just draw your dragonflies right over the top of pretty much anything. You'll see be behind them, and you'll see through them, and it's a lot of fun. So the quick and easiest way, we're going to draw the dragonfly flat, and then we'll draw a dragonfly from the side, and then we'll draw a dragonfly flat, but with its little back end of its body twisted. So I'm drawing on a piece of 140 pound watercolor paper, and it doesn't matter which side it's on for me. This is the Arteza watercolor paper. I'm using the EcoPen, and this is a very, it's a 0.38 tip, and uh, it has a cardboard tube. So it's really, you can feel a little bit better about using up disposable pens because you can put the tube part of it in the recycle bin. So that can all go in the recycling because it's just cardboard. And then you just have to throw away this part or figure out some kind of craft project, which is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Good morning. All right, so coming in, zoom in on the close up here. Flat down, I'm going to put an oblong or squished oval for the head. I am going to then take just a straight line down. And he has a part of his body that's another kind of oval. Right now it looks sort of like we're starting a daisy, doesn't it? You've got a stem, a petal, and the center, but it's not. It's a dragonfly. <laughs> First time. Oh, excellent. Well, thank you for coming, and make sure and tell Mary that I'm excited that she's sharing. I love the Mary Atelier, so if you guys love to do um, any kind of mixed media work. Oh, now I'm doing small smaller than that top one, small U shapes, and I'm just having them touch each other, connecting. And they're going to get smaller as I go down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because apparently they have eight little segments at the back here. Who knew? I didn't until I did some research yesterday. Now the wings, you just want your wings to be kind of balanced, the same size, right and left. 
So what I'm going to do, since I'm closer to this edge of the paper, I'm going to draw this wing first. And I'm basically going from that center line. I'm going to go out, around, and back. And I'm tapering as I come back to the body. So it's kind of like a popsicle stick if you took it and held it at an angle coming towards you. It looks like it's uh, in perspective. Yay, thank you guys so much. Then I'm going to do the same thing and the bottom wing is just about the same size, but you know what? You don't have to be perfect on your shape. What you wanna do then is go to the other side of the body and try and match it up ish but you know what dragonfly wings can move independent of each other that's why they can they can uh, fly the way they do each one of these wings can move so they can go forward and backward up and down sideways it's crazy it's cool and basically that's your basic dragonfly. Now, I like to go back in and on the top edge of these wings, thicken up that top line. Just a little bit, not, you know, it doesn't have to be a lot. Remember that the wings on a dragonfly are transparent. So you are you know, you're going to see through them. You'll see things that are laying underneath. Now, I did, you know, this sample right here. So right now, what we're basically doing is something like this. Very simple, basic wings. You can either put the realistic legs on it if you want, or you can leave the legs off because you're not, you're not limited. You know, this is fantasy. I'm not looking at a real dragonfly right now, but I do like knowing that their eyes are here. So I'm kind of cutting that circle a little bit. And most dragonflies I've seen have, have kind of a little dot up here on the top edge out towards the tip. There we go. All right, thank you guys so much for sharing. I appreciate that. Now, I want to do one that he's got a bit of a curve to his body. So give it a curve. Put that flattened oval on the top again. Give him his thorax, that body part. Do the little U shapes. One, two, three four, five. If a little bit sticks out, make it into just a little V because that's, you know, on the quote unquote realistic ones, they have a little, a little bit on the end of their tail. And this time I'm going to do the wing. I'm going to go out. I'm going to give it a a little curl in and then back out and I'll do the same thing but I'm going to let this one overlap just a little bit down here and it doesn't have as deep of a curve it's okay you know and if you've ever looked at maple seeds and thought gee that looks like a dragonfly wing that's pretty much what I just drew is maple seeds and now I'm just going to give it that top you can do all kinds of things with these dragonflies now you can give them their transparent wings or you could go in and you can doodle right on the wings. So I doodled on this one. <laughs> and then 
I didn't doodle on that. I just gave it the little lines that looks like it's sort of shiny. And then I colored these with uh, watercolor pencil. So we'll go ahead and color some with watercolor pencil also. Oh, I like to share, you know, ideas and, and thoughts about things. These are staying pretty basic right now. I want to go ahead and put one dragonfly from the side. And again, it doesn't have to look realistic. I'm going to say he's got a round head and we're going to be looking at him from the side. That's, it's going to be sort of like this. Okay, give you an idea where we're heading. But you see how these are all easy beginner shapes. Now his head is connected to the body, so I'm going to just make sort of a fat shape that's kind of weird. Oh, <laughs> You know what? Doodling is just drawing that you take the pressure off of. Think about it that way. Doodling is just drawing that you took the pressure off of. I think this one, since I'm so close to the edge of the paper, I'm going to go ahead and do the, the body parts. I'm going to curve them for that tail bit. One, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight. All right. All right. Thank you. Oh, Katie, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate that. I know that you are a busy, busy lady with taking care of those kittles and all the projects that you've got going. So this is the side view of the body. So when you're looking at the side view, you're not seeing the wings from the top, you're seeing them from the side. So all four wings are going to get stacked up here. They're going to be see-through. So I'm going to take my first wing. This is the one in back, so I'm not, I'm not taking it down past that line, which is the top of his back. I'm going to put my second wing in. That's the back side. Now the front ones right here, they're going to get drawn right over the top of the, the back ones. So we're just going to go like this, boom. And boom. Again, because they are transparent, and you can see through the wings. It might get a little confusing on one of those wings, but that's okay because have you ever looked at a dragonfly? Their wings are confusing when they're flying. And then I'm putting that thickened up edge. I want to get my little marker spots. I'm going to give him, they have huge compound eyes which is um, just like a fly. They are, let's see, these guys are related to like uh, damselflies and mayflies. They start out in the water as a nymph and then they hatch from that nymph phase as dragonflies and then go out and catch tons and tons of mosquitoes. I totally love dragonflies. Now, because this is from the side and you can kind of see his legs, I'm going to go ahead and show you, I'm drawing his legs on. Now, I'm not being anatomically correct with his legs. I am just putting kind of a long V shape and then another long V shape that connects like at an elbow. And then he has little like little hands. And he has two sets that are really close to each other at the front. See, this is like doodling. 
where you stop and start your line so it looks like something's behind. I'm going to put him on a piece of grass or something. I'm not sure yet. Probably. And then he has a longer set of legs that's in the back, almost like a grasshopper. But not, but not exactly the same. They don't have all the same things. And then we're going to go ahead and put that piece of grass. And now I'm, this is where our, our doodling is all coming into play. where we're drawing a line in and we're just watching to see where that line's going. Now this could just be a stick. It could be grass. It could be a flower. I think this one might just be a bit of a stick, kind of a broken stick that's growing on the side of a pond. And there, look at that. Now we've got our basic dragonflies already done. And what, we're 15 minutes in? I think three dragonflies in 15 minutes is a pretty good deal. I'm going to put a dot on the top wing of that set. I still want his little markers on that front edge. Now, I like the look of putting just a little bit of color do you guys want to stay with just black and white or do you want to go with some color? I think the answer is going to be go with color because we've only been here for 15 minutes. But, you know, giving you guys the option. Now this is a postcard. I can actually put a stamp on it on the other side. It is a five by seven, so I would have to put a standard, um, standard postage on it. If you want to be able to do postcards that you can just mail with a postcard stamp, do it no bigger than four and a half inches tall or and six inches wide. That is the biggest postcard you can do with a postcard stamp. And yeah, thank you so much, Gina, for mentioning that. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you want to be notified when more videos go up. Wednesday's video that I don't have scheduled yet is going to be Wing Things 2 or Things with Wings 2, and we're going to do butterflies. Same thing, we're gonna do four butter or three butterflies on a postcard, and then we will color it. This is really, really done. Oh yeah, they're compound eyes, just like the flies. That means that they have like a, a, a ton of eyes in here. But most of the time I don't do it quite so doodly. I just give them a dark spot on the side of their head. There we go. This pen is waterproof, so I can go in and do the watercolor. <laughs> Excellent, thank you so much for joining us. We're a fun little community. We have, we have a good time. Uh, do we want to do, let's go ahead and put color on and then we'll do one that's a doodle, just um, like a Zentangle doodle. So I wanted to just throw some color on I'm grabbing a pink, uh, this is fuchsia watercolor pencil, and this one is going to become a pink dragonfly. So I am just flicking that color in. Let's see if we can do it from the side view here so you can see my, my motion. I'm just flicking the color in. I'm not going all the way out to the back of the wing though. I'm keeping the color down here towards the body. This would be a challenge with your non-dominant hand, indeed, but it is something you could do. And I appreciate everything that anyone does, especially when you have a challenge in front of you. <laughs> And when you have an injury to your hands, it's really tricky to 
to continue to be creative, but it's, it's so much fun and it actually works your brain more if you practice with your non-dominant hand sometimes. Anybody want to see me try and draw one with my non-dominant hand? <laughs> I have not practiced a dragonfly non-dominant, so let me know. Look at that. All right, so I just picked up the carmine red with that fuchsia, and I used the carmine red as my shadow underneath. I'm going to put a little bit of that right here on the wing little bit of color right there in his face and then we're just going to grab a water brush once I find where my water brush got tucked <laughs> all right so we will do a non-dominant hand drawing also but first I want to get this postcard so I'm just dragging the color out and I'm letting I'm letting it be kind of patchy because if you think about it, dragonfly wings, they are so reflective. They are transparent, but they are reflective. And maybe this little guy is reflecting the roses or something, some wildflowers. Leave some of the white because that gives you that idea that he's got some shape. All right, easy peasy. So welcome. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make this little guy right here. He's going to be green and maybe yellow. So I'm just touching this color down in. This is watercolor pencil, so that's why I can just scribble a little bit on. Go ahead and go back to the top view. Scribble a little bit on, and then let the wa the water brush move the color around. There we go. And these are fantasy. I'm not looking at any real ones right now. But the neat thing is that fantasy dragonflies are actually very similar to realistic dragonflies. Once you've got the idea of how the wings are attached. So I looked at some real ones, real photos. There we go. To find out how they get put together. Let's see, grab, I'm grabbing a, uh, this is Tuscan Sun. I'm gonna give him some highlights with a little bit of that Tuscan Sun. And these, I am not coloring super, super saturated. I want them to be soft and gentle. You know, keep it calm, keep it relaxed. Or not. I mean, you can go totally psychedelic colored if you wanted to. Good morning. Yay. I am so happy that you guys found me this morning. I needed to go earlier just because with my husband back on his daytime schedule it makes more sense for me to go while he's at work so that way I can spend time with him when he's home it's been really interesting having him home for weeks and weeks on end it really really um, I had to adjust my work schedule because I wanted to spend time with him but I found that I would uh, procrastinate my own work so that I could spend time with him. Oh, that's sweet. Look at that. And maybe one that's more of those sapphire blue type colors. So I'm going to take a Prussian blue in on his body for the big one that's flat. There you go. So you see how easy and beginner friendly this is, right? I mean, we're going to see in just a second how beginner friendly it is because I'm going to do it with my left hand. I'm going to be non-dominant hand on it. 
a little bit of that dark color down here at the base of the wing. And you see how just adding a little bit of color actually lifts it up and makes it feel a little more special. A little color can do that, but totally black and white doodles can do it too. All right. I'm starting to get a handful of pencils now. <laughs> I, I realize that about myself is that I tend to, if I pick something up, I tend to keep a hold of it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's something psychological. Or it's because my table is slanted and everything will go falling off unless I put it back in the jar and then I have to go searching for the color if I want to use it again. That's probably more the case. And look at that. We did primary color dragonflies. <laughs> We've got a red, a blue, well, it's green, but it looks yellow. <laughs> So we're just moving that color around. Like I said before, leave some of that white of the paper. There we go. So I moved my microphone around today. Let me know if the sound is better or worse. I haven't seen any complaints, so I figure it's not really worse. And maybe you, you don't even notice that I moved it. And that's fine, too. Uh, if I wanted to make it look 3D, you mean like, like this one up here? Because this one's already looking kind of 3D. I would... Let's see got a little bit of this blue. I'm just picking it up and putting it on that pink. So that wing is going darker into the back. A little bit of that blue. I'm just using that blue right there. It's kind of like a palette. <laughs> and art supplies packed away for your move. Go shopping. Yeah, just go grab a pencil or a piece of paper, you know, recycle bin stuff. I hope that your move goes well. I think I'm going to just take a little bit of that blue and just make it a bit darker down here at the underside. And make that leg in the back. The legs that are on the back side, I'm making darker. See how just making it a little bit darker over there is starting to give it that 3D type of look. Putting a little bit of the darker color between those segments of his tail and underneath, under the body and coming up. So there, that's, I mean, really, that's giving you that idea of the little bit more three-dimensional. Oh, we need to color the, the branch in, don't we? So I'm going to put just a touch of color. Oh, if you guys like uh, flower videos... If you could check out my Sakura cherry blossom that I just put up. It's a really pretty uh, cherry blossom branch. It is a dropped video. It wasn't the live. And I do, I show step by step how to draw. And then I, <laughs> then I, um, color it with the watercolor pencils and there's segments of speed up and segments of real time so that way you get the full version wow um i think i want to throw just a little bit of some color in around in the background just 
just because. And I think, ooh, maybe we'll, you guys want a little bit of metallic on the wings? I want a little metallic on the wings. And then maybe just a little sprinkle of some colors. So I'm just going to get this wet and grab a bigger brush. I have some water. I am on a slant, so my, my, my palette keeps trying to slide away. There we go. I'm gonna grab some of this really pretty purple. And yeah, it does kind of have a fairy fairy wing type of quality to it, doesn't it? Little touch. It's much more apparent when you're in person, when you're looking at these um, metallic colors, but the color is pretty. And we'll grab a little bit of this blue. Ooh. Don't cover up all of your white, though. I'm using this like the, uh, kind of like for the veining. I will put a little video holding up this card out in the light so that way you can see it a little bit better. See the, the shimmers? Because it's kind of hard to show shimmer. There, you can see it a little bit. <laughs> My palette is so clean. Um, well, I haven't used it a ton. And because I use my palette kind of like a coloring box of, you know, just, I, I paint with this more like uh, just spot colors. I don't do a lot of mixing, but you can mix, you can mix these colors with regular watercolor and you get that little kind of a tiny bit of a mica mica um my brain just went dead the shimmer the mica shimmer in in your colors ooh that's pretty yeah i get distracted by pretty sparkles i think a lot of us do A little bit of that, a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. Oh, that's pretty. All right. And then, Nancy wants to know about the proportions of the body. Oh, thank you. Um, let's see. I'd say that the thorax, the, the thick part here, is about one-third the length of the tail. So, or one-third the length of the whole thing. So if I go from the head to the tail, this is about one third ish. Maybe not counting the head, the thorax is one third. So if I was doing this as three inches long, I'd say that the thorax, this part of his body is one inch and the eight little segments down here is two inches. Does that make sense? But I'm not measuring and I'm not being as, um, oh gosh, I'm not being as drilled in on the proportions. Uh, the wings I'd say are almost the length of the body is long. So about two and a half inches per wing. Their wingspan is big. It's 
So I hope that helps. I want to just throw a little bit of color into the background. And I think what I want is some of this sort of acidy, acid type of a green yellow. And ooh, actually, I'm going to just put some water on first. There we go. Around my dragonflies. I'm just going to drop some color on and wherever it goes. And I picked up a little bit of that brown. We'll just give it a little bit of some color in the background, but it's not going to be an actual I'm, I'm tipping my head to the side so I can kind of look and see where where my colors are. Now let's just go and we're just going to put some of that in on the wet. You're not going to see it super, super strong, but it's going to be shimmery and maybe a little bit of some darker green down here. We're just very watercolor. <laughs> Yeah, very watercolory. I'm just putting patches of greens in. Right, no straight lines in nature. Oh, good. Oh, I'm glad that the the explanation I gave is helpful. You know, you never know <laughs> when you're doing explanations if if it's going to be what people need. I try. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do that non-dominant hand. As soon as I get just a couple more spots, I'm going to grab some yellow. I'm bringing some of it kind of up close, but I didn't get the paper wet close to the dragonflies. So that way, I can push it in and be a little more controlled. Maybe a little bit of some blue. Up here at the top. I'm just I'm just dabbing some color on. It's very, very light. And I think this is probably going to get sent off to one of my patrons. And thank you, Nancy. Being one of my new patrons, I appreciate that. Katie, Gina. I've got all kinds of patrons that love to show up for the live shows. And I love that. And I love our community that we're starting to build. But see, keep it soft. Add a little more water if you need to. Oh, that's pretty. Maybe a little bit more down here at the bottom. Just got it wet. Throw a little bit more of the green down here. I kind of regret putting that jungle green on. It was sort of murky. I wanted to keep it a little more light and fresh. There we go. All right, light and fresh. Maybe a little bit of some of this little bit of the purpley pink. And I'm just splattering it on so it, it ends up looking kind of like flowers in the background. Again, very soft, very gentle. I don't want it to be too wild and crazy, but it gives us a little bit of something. All right, so 
set that over to the side. Oh, I forgot to sign it. <laughs> I probably should sign this. So let's find a dry spot. Let's dry a spot. So I'm, gonna, I'm just using my uh, heat tool to dry just really quick. You know you don't have to be able to draw well, right? You know all it is is just having fun with it. There we go. Doodling videos help. That's why I'm doing the doodle videos, because I want people to see that you can do things that you never thought were possible. Ooh, yeah, I like that shimmer. Uh, you can do things that you never thought were possible because you took the pressure off of yourself. And that's why doodling is my best trick for learning how, <laughs> learning how to do different types of art. All right. <laughs> so you guys want to see me do this? Do, we're going to do a dragonfly. I, this is my left hand. See, ring finger, left hand, wedding finger. Um, I'm going to take a slip of my... <laughs> okay. Let me go to the... I'm really going to do it. <laughs> I am really going to draw with my left hand. I don't do this very often. And it is something that, you know, do things that push you a little bit, make you a little bit more um, uncomfortable. Oh, my owl mug, things with wings. I figure I can, I can milk that, um, that topic or that uh, title a little bit. Okay, so um, I'm going to leave me on the screen so you can see my, <laughs> see my silliness here. Uh, so one, I'm just going to flip my paper over. I want to practice. Okay, so straight lines. I can do straight lines. Straight line. Ah, wobbly lines. Yeah, yeah, wobbly lines. Not perfectly straight. But this is... Doing things like this actually flip you into the other side of your brain. It forces your brain to, to cross because your brain, this side of your brain works this side. This side of your brain works this side of your body. So right side of the brain, left side of your body. And I don't know why it's crossed that way, but the hemispheres in our brain work that way. Do the one with veins on the wings. Okay, we will do that. But first, <laughs> here we go. We're going to draw. Um, I'm going to practice a circle. Whoops. Practice a circle. Whoops. Let's see if I go the other way. Oh, so I can't go around to the left. I have to go around to the right. Not perfect circles, guys. Look at that. They don't have to be. I'm noticing that I get a, a bump in the same spot, though. That's an idiosyncrasy of my left-handed drawing. So you start to see patterns in your own artwork, in your own doodles. Learn to cross the center line of the brain. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so let's see if I'm going to practice a wing or a petal shape. This is a really good way to... Ooh, okay. I can do them going that way. Now I have to practice one that's going... The other way. Okay, so that one's a lot bigger. That one's a little smaller. Okay. Another trick, have a pen that the ink flows nicely on. And if you notice, I'm not sketching. I'm pulling my pen around. I'm 
pushing my pen around, but I'm not, I'm not doing little sketchy lines because that's harder than letting it flow around. Ooh, that one went nice. Okay, I think Oh, it's going it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting, especially since I'm trying to talk and write with my wrong hand at the same time. Okay. Whew. All right, we're going to do non-dominant hand dragonfly. We're going to do it as big as we can or as consistent as we can. All right. <laughs> this is tricky. Okay, I might go quiet here for a second as I, all right, make a commitment, put the pen down, all right. Ooh, okay. Um, I will zoom in, but I will put myself back on the screen. Let's see, uh, where'd that camera go? All right, we're zoomed in. Ooh, that's a... A wonkity line. All right. I'm going to give myself the thorax. Ooh, you see? Hmm. Give him his eye spot. His eye spot. Yeah, I have a I have a certain bump. This looks like a four year old, three year old drew it. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, this type of pen, this is the Eco Pen. It is a cardboard tube with the um, pen insert in it. It has waterproof ink, surprisingly. It doesn't advertise it that way. The cardboard tube and cap can be thrown in the recycle bin. And the pen itself, you, I'm trying to figure out a project to use because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And the links are down below in the more information box. All right. Uh -huh. Okay. See, I was following a squirrel so that I could avoid doing left hand draw, left hand draw, left hand draw. All right. So, but one of the things, I think he's going to have a curve to his tail. <laughs> Your as you're going along, if your hand is doing the same kind of little jerk, you get a, it, it becomes consistent. And then it's like, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, one more. Eight. Okay. We got, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny looking. All right, so now wings. Going to go out and come back. Okay, we're going to go out. Come back. Oh, those two wings actually turned out okay. I think I'm going to flip this over. So I'm I'm doing the wing the same direction. It's cheating. It's not cheating. It's drawing. To the best of my skill using my strengths Ooh, he's got three wings four wings okay non-dominant hand guys we can do it we can do it all right, so now I want to see about putting that thickened edge. We can do it. Now, you saw what I did is I practiced a little bit before, didn't I? Um, it's not completely hideous. The only thing that's really making it look really young is the wobbles in the eyes. I am going to see about I'm going to see about 
coloring in and smoothing up the line and working small. Wouldn't this be a cute drawing for a Father's Day? Have the kids do that? I'm going to be doing some fish. I'm going to be doing the uh, koi and betta fish. And some fishing lures. Fishing lures are good because they're very, um, I mean, they're comical, almost cartoon-like. All right, so I'm going to put in some color in to the back of his head here, maybe a little bit up into the head here with the black. I think I'm going to go ahead and close the back of, whoops. All right, so let's see here. Close the back of that. I think I want to put color in and yeah, I'll do it with my left hand. I'll use the colored pe watercolor pencils and the brush. This, this particular drawing is all left-handed. I should have done this as a separate video though. Maybe do you, do you guys mind if I do it as a separate video? Um, again, I will do another one. Put some little lines going out to the tip of his nose. And it's going to be my left hand challenge video. You guys just got my practice run. How's that? You can say you were there. <laughs> And we're going to put some dots going down his back just because, but yeah, the consistency, <laughs> I'm sure that I have my concentration face on there, <laughs> but you get to see the top of my head. <laughs> Excellent. All right. You guys want to see that too. Okay. So. Nancy, you wanted to see putting the veins in on the wings. I'm going to do it with my left hand. This is an all left-handed drawing, so I'm going to I'm going to do this one, but I will be I'll probably do a butterfly left hand. Ooh, now I'm going to do a dragonfly left hand because I've practiced this one. But the veins on the wings, they don't have to be the same on each wing. And you can keep your pen, don't press your pen down hard and let the pen skip. So that way you get light and you get highlights and shadow basically in your wing. So I'm going to go from this thickened up edge up here. I'm going to just sort of let it skip, skip. And I'm going to come from back here and I'm just going to come out and maybe come in. Let the line wobble. Actually, it might be better to do this with your left hand. <laughs> because then you get some of those more natural curves to your line. Ooh, that's kind of fun. All right. We're going to go and zoom all the way out. Maybe do kind of a Y shape. Just let your pen sort of skip and maybe join in a little bit there. This is coming up in the world, isn't it? Yeah, you could do this with gel pens. I probably would test to see if you want to put watercolor on it. Um, Check and see if your gel pens will uh, let you put watercolor over them. You know, you're, I, I'm going to put watercolor pencil on here, but then you could also use regular colored pencil.
And look at that. Ooh. Oh, we went outside the line a little bit. No big deal. Let's see. Yes, rotate the paper. Nothing says that you have to keep the paper in one angle. I know there's a lot of people out on YouTube. They keep their paper in one spot, and that's because they've got their camera locked down. They, um, they're not doing it all in one go. And so that way, let's see. That way you can, um, I just lost my, my train of thought. See, that's the thing. When you're working on the wrong, on back and forth, the right side of your brain is the creative, the uh, working into um, abstract type of thinking. And it's not where your language center is. The language center is on the left side of your brain. And that's why I can talk and, and draw with my right hand. No problem. <laughs> I'm accent, but I know that I am accessing the right side of my brain while I'm drawing, even when I'm drawing with the right side of my body, because I'm thinking abstractly. <laughs> Yes, gel pens take longer to dry. They, um, pretty colors, metallics, creamy whites, pastels, bright, brilliant, jewelry to jewel type tones. Um, I do have a white, this is not a gel pen, the white Signo Uniball that I like to use for highlights and things. Uh, it's a pigment ink. It dries uh, and you can watercolor over it the um let's put some color on this guy let's get some color left-handed watercoloring now <laughs> well kind of left le left-handed coloring with watercolor pencils and then we'll use the brush all right so i am taking i wanted to put this into my hand and start coloring with my right hand ah, okay but this is we're putting some of this lighter color out here very loosely. You can hardly see it. I need to press a little bit harder. I have not done coloring with my left hand. Mm, yeah, this is, this is definitely something to, to play with more. But I am keeping my hand lifted up off the paper. I'm not touching so that I don't smear my hand through things. Now, this ink is dry. This ink is dry already. It The EcoPen ink is amazing. I'm going to take this color right down the center. It's going to be my highlight just like that and out here onto his face. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky to um, to see the color because I, I like working a lot lighter and building up color. This, ooh, this is the amethyst purple. I thought I grabbed the Prussian blue. Oh, well. That's okay. Jewel tones, beautiful tones. I love seeing dragonflies when we go out to the wildlife refuge. There's sections of the refuge, they're not open right now for walking, but there's sections of our local wildlife refuge that when they're open for walking, they go through wetland and woods so you get the opportunity to see lots of wildlife and dragonflies are very prevalent. Okay, so putting, so this is a left-handed drawing of a dragonfly with a left-handed coloring of the dragonfly. This is my non-dominant hand, guys. I have not practiced this. <laughs> 
But I want you to see that even though it's not my, my dominant hand and the line quality is all over the place and my shapes are not all consistent. Look at that. I mean, we're getting a dragonfly. It's, it's obviously a dragonfly. And you don't have to be worried. This is a doodle of a dragonfly also. Remember, we're doodling this dragonfly on. Doodles are drawings that you do without any pressure. Although I put the pressure of <laughs> doing it with my left hand to show that your non-dominant hand can be trained. I am not ambidextrous. I do not do things normally with my left hand. Uh, only things I do with my left hand are things that are like you would normally do with your left hand. Like I play a ukulele. So my ukulele gets corded with my left hand. You know, you press the strings down with your left hand, you strum with your right hand. Okay, I'm going to go and get that wet now. Water brush? I think so. I think it's a water brush, maybe. Yeah, there. Water brush. Okay, cool. One side is patterned. Don't care for it. One side is patterned and don't care for it. Black for it. Back is white. Just have fun. Just have fun. I'm going to go ahead. I just have a water brush now. This is a just a tube with water that goes through a little valve out to the tip. Uh, this is a, I believe this is an Arteza. It was one of their, um, one of the ones that came in, in a palette of, of paint. Ah, just take the pressure off. That's the, that's the key with it. Take the pressure off. Don't, I mean, think about it guys. What did I just do? I drew a dragonfly with my non-dominant hand on live YouTube. I mean, I didn't take the pressure off, did I? There was pressure. There was pressure to get it done. And it was personal pressure. You guys weren't putting pressure on me, but I wanted to make sure that I didn't let you down. And the nice thing about watercolor pencil is that it kind of stays where you put it. So I'm getting it wet. I'm letting those colors blend. I'm leaving some edges white. I'm not real happy with all of that black. Oh no, no, this is not talent. This is just, this is just giving myself permission to not, not be too worried about it. I'm going to just take that white pen and kind of clean up that area there. Ooh, look at that. You can cover up all kinds of things. You can put a little bit of highlight, dot it in. <sighs> okay. I like the look of that better. It, it took it out of looking like there was a mouth. <laughs> There, so you will blow yourself away with what you can do when you give yourself permission to just explore your art. I want to say thank you guys.
and that I have tons of doodling videos, lots of shows for all kinds of folks, and we have all kinds of fun coming up. Here you go. Today's fun little guys. Oh, do I have to sign it with my left hand? <laughs> okay, we're going to sign it with the left hand. I'm going to see if I can do my little my little box. Okay. Totally done with the left hand. Oh, I signed it. <laughs> <laughs> guys thank you so much for being here i really appreciate you i want you to try something a little bit hard for yourself try doing something that stretches your brain just a little bit and we will do more non-dominant drawing because i need to practice <laughs> Remember to go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. Subscribe, share, comment. Leave a comment afterwards if you tried drawing with your left hand for the very first time. I want to know. Let's see how many people tried it. And more things with wings coming up on Wednesday. Take a look at all the other videos on the channel too. <laughs> Bye guys.